All right, so in this video, we are going to learn about squares, rectangle, and rhombi, not rhombuses. Um, some important things, they're all quadrilateral, so they have four sides. And then they're also all parallelograms. So all the properties you learned about parallelograms are still going to be true in these shapes. We're just going to have um, more specific characteristics that we'll have to use, okay? So first off, we're going to start with a rectangle. Um, and so this is a rectangle. Um, with a rectangle, all we know... Our opposite sides are congruent. And that's nothing new from a parallelogram. So this side is the same as this. This side is the same as this. If they give you equations, you set them equal. Okay? We do know something more specific about angles. We know they have all right angles which means I have a box in this corner, box in this corner, box in this corner, and box in this corner, and they're all 90 degrees, okay? So a rectangle has all 90 degree angles. So that's something more specific, okay? Um, the diagonals, they're gonna buy, or first off, they're gonna be congruent. Okay, so this whole diagonal is gonna be equal to this whole diagonal, okay? So if they give you the length of all of those, you're going to be setting them equal, okay? Um, the second thing that happens is they bisect each other. And that is uh, was also true in a parallelogram, okay? So remember when we did this is congruent to this? Well, now we can take it a little step further, and we know that that piece is going to be congruent to that piece because the diagonals are congruent, okay? So you're not going to have two tick marks like you saw um, with parallelograms, okay? So each piece of the diagonal is congruent. Um, so a cool thing that happens is you have isosceles triangles. You have four of them, okay? So technically, these are going to be the same angles. These are going to be the same angles because you've got a lot of isosceles triangles going on. You also have vertical angles. Oh, if I can find my mouse. So vertical angles here and here, okay? So lots of cool things helping with rectangles. Um, but let's move on to ra a rhombus, okay? Um, we know something important about a rhombus. Um, they actually have all the same sides. So all sides are congruent. So this is the same as this, which is the same as this, and the same of this. So again, you're going to set your sides congruent or equal to. Um, we don't know anything about the angles in a rhombus, though. So we're going to use the same ones from a parallelogram. So the opposite... Angles are congruent, and then we know same side interior equal 180. So these angles are congruent, this angle is congruent to this one, and then these two equal 180. So that's all based on parallelograms, okay? We do know some more specific things about the diagonals, though, okay? Um, we know they bisect each other. because that's what a parallelogram did. So this is congruent to this, this piece is congruent to that piece. Um, they are not going to be congruent. So that's why I put that not there, okay? So in a rhombus, this really long piece is never going to be equal to this same piece, okay? But there is one third thing that happens. Um, the diagonals are perpendicular. So remember that um, symbol was the upside down T. So what you know is you've got a 90 degree angle there, which means you have a 90 degree angle here and here and there. Okay? So notice we've got four small triangles in the middle. Okay? So if I tell you this degree, you can use that 90 knowledge to find another missing degree. Okay? And then you've got alternate interior angles, okay? So a lot can happen um, when you cut a quadrilateral into pieces and you actually end up getting triangles, okay? All right, that's all we know about a rhombus. Moving on to the last most specific shape, which is a square, okay? So a square is like if a rectangle and a rhombus had a baby, okay? It's got characteristics of all of them, okay? So first off, um, I know the sides are congruent. So all sides are congruent. So that, 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 and that all have the same side. Okay? Angles. I know they're all 90 degrees. 
So they're all right angles. So I got a right angle, a right angle, a right angle, and a right angle. Okay? And then the diagonals takes on both characteristics of those. So I know they're going to bisect. I know they're going to be perpendicular. And I know they're going to be congruent. Okay? So I know they're going to bisect each other. Now, since they were congruent, I know we're going to have isosceles triangles going on. And then I'm also going to have a right angle everywhere in that middle um, angle. Okay? So again, I've got isosceles triangles going on. And I've got vertical angles and all that jazz. Okay? So we're going to use our knowledge of triangles and quadrilaterals um, with these. Okay? So those are the properties of all of them. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Otherwise, you're going to have to kind of memorize those and practice with them. But if you turn, oh no, it's joke time. He took the rhombus. Ha 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 ha. Um, <laughs> is that it? What's going on? Okay, sorry. So we got one more page, turn it over. So I want you to name each parallelogram based on just the markings, okay? So you're going to name it a square, a rectangle, a rhombus, a parallelogram, or just a quadrilateral if you can't tell a lot about it, okay? So why don't you press pause and try this whole back page. Um, this one is talking about you're going to make a mark if it's true. So are the angles congruent? Mark, 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 okay? So try that back page, press pause, and I will go over the answer with you guys. Number one is a rhombus because you had a perpendicular by or your diagonals were perpendicular, so you either had to pick a square or a rhombus. And since these diagonals were different, it was a rhombus. Um, this was a square um, because it told you it was a parallelogram, so you know that this side is the same as this, and this is the same as this. Um, and then opposite um, angles would be congruent, so you would end up making a square. Um, with a rectangle, you could know that this angle was 90 because this one was, since it was a parallelogram. And again, they're all 90, so you could say it was a rectangle. On number four, you know opposite sides are the same, so you can make those marks and then say that it was a rhombus because they were all the same sides. Um, this one would be a rectangle because we don't have a perpendicular diagonal, but they are the same, so it'd be a rectangle. Lastly, a square because the diagonals are perpendicular and um, the same side, okay? So that's how you can determine what a shape is based on the markings, okay? Now on the bottom part, um, got a little bit tricky here and I'll talk about that in a second. So all angles are congruent in a rectangle and a rhombus, um, but hold on, not a rhombus. It is true in a square, not a rhombus. All sides are congruent in a rhombus and a square. Um, the diagonals are congruent in a rectangle and a square. And then the diagonals are perpendicular in a rhombus and a square. Now what this means, the diagonals are bisecting the vertex angles. That means do the diagonals cut the angle in half, okay? And that is true in a rhombus and a square. So let me kind of go back to our notes and kind of make some marks. So what that means is that this um, diagonal is going to make this angle congruent to this angle, okay? Same thing, this diagonal is going to cut this angle and that angle in half, okay? So that's what it means that the diagonals are going to bisect the angles. So that's going to be true in a rhombus and even true in a square. So this angle is going to be congruent to this one. This angle is going to be congruent to that one. Now the reason it doesn't happen in a rectangle is because this obviously is a very acute angle and this one's bigger. Okay, So that's a little bit of a clear up on that. Um, and then all of these properties down here were all the properties of a parallelogram. So it was obviously going to be true in all these shapes because a rectangle and a rhombus and a square are all a kind of a parallelogram, okay? All right, so those are all the properties of squares, rectangles, and parallelograms. All right, so now that you've learned about all the types of parallelograms, let's look at a parallelogram family tree to help us remember some of the properties. So up top, the head of the family would be the quadrilateral. So that's the most vague shape can be, it just has to have four sides. So then the next classification could be a parallelogram.
okay? And then off of that parallelogram, we have three kind of children, okay? So on the left side, we have the rhombus. On the right side, we have the rectangle. And at the very bottom is the square. Okay, so as you get down this family tree, that's the most specific shape you can get. Okay, so we're going to look at some sometimes, always, never problems, which can be kind of tricky. Um, because guess what? A square is a rectangle. And a square is also a rhombus. And that kind of confuses people. So going down, it could be true sometimes. So a quadrilateral can sometimes be a parallelogram if it has all parallel sides. A rhombus could sometimes be a square if it had all right angles. And a rectangle could sometimes be a square if all the sides were the same. Okay? Um, and then it's going to be true always going up. So a square is always a rectangle, and it's always a rhombus, and it's always a parallelogram, and it's always a quadrilateral. A rectangle is always a parallelogram. It's always a quadrilateral. A rhombus is always a parallelogram. Okay? So sometimes going down would be true, always would be going up. Um, and this one is actually sometimes going across. So a rhombus could sometimes be rectangle and vice versa. Okay? So this is going to help you remember the sometimes, always, nevers. So let's take a look at some problems. All right, so I want you to determine whether the statements are always, sometimes, or never true, okay? So try one through six on your own, and then I also want you to try these bottom three. Classify each shape as the most specific shape, either a quadrilateral, a parallelogram, a square, a rectangle, or a rhombus. So pick the most specific shape you can guess based on the markings. So press pause and try those on your own. One, a square is a rhombus that's always true, so notice over here, a square is always everything above it. So a square is everything. So a square is always a rhombus. A rhombus is a square sometimes. So a rhombus could sometimes be a square if it had all right angles, but sometimes it doesn't have to. Um, a rectangle is a square, that'd be sometimes again. So a rectangle could sometimes be a square if it had all the same um, sides. Parallelogram is a rectangle sometimes. So a parallelogram could be a rectangle, or it could be a rhombus, or it could be a square. Um, a rhombus is a rectangle, sometimes true. So if these had all the right angles, then it would be a square. So it's kind of like if the rectangle could be classified as a square, then it would be classified as a rhombus. Could be sometimes. Um, and then a square is a parallelogram always. So any of those three shapes we just learned about are always parallelograms, as well as quadrilaterals. Um, on the bottom one, so the first shape was a square. I knew all the sides were the shape, or the same size, because I know opposite sides are congruent. Um, so therefore, I knew all of them had to be 90 degree angles, and all the sides were the same, so it was a square. Over here, all I knew was all the sides were the same, and it didn't have a 90 degree angle, so I could say it was a rhombus. And then over here, I had absolutely no markings. It looks like a rhombus, but you can't assume anything, so... I don't even know if it's a parallelogram because it doesn't have any parallel sides. So that would be a quadrilateral. If they had told you that these sides are parallel with the arrows, then it would be a parallelogram. But other than that, you don't know. So it's a quadrilateral. All right. Thanks for watching squares, rectangles, and rhombi. And now you can start to use all your properties to practice.